this will be the first video you watch. Hopefully you watch them in order. And the way that these videos work, please try to remember that when you're watching a video on the internet, you can pause it. So there's some, if you want to just write down everything that's on the slide and then listen to what I say, um, a lot of kids have done that in the past, but remember you can pause and rewind and what, so on and so forth. Um, we're going to start with chapter one in the book. Um, it's basically a collection chapter. We talk about characteristics about the structure of the earth. Um, the oceans themselves, the exploration of the oceans, the scientific method, we go into a whole bunch of different things. Um, so let's get just kind of right into it. The first thing we're going to do is um, talk about the Earth. So the, the, there's sort of a irony to the fact that we call the planet Earth, which is in reference to its land, when the fact is that the oceans are the most prominent feature on the planet. 71% uh, of the Earth's surface is water, um, ocean specifically. And almost all of the surface water on the planet is in the ocean. Um, some less than 3% are found in glaciers, lakes, and streams and rivers. And all of these oceans are interconnected, meaning that if something you do in one place will have an effect somehow um, in another part of the ocean. So these are like the most um, well, uh, largest features on that planet, and it's actually ironically not very well studied. We know more about the surface of the moon than we do about our oceans, especially our deep oceans, um, which is something as an oceanographer, I'm like, why is that happening? So we're going to talk about um, these sort of, you know, lines we've drawn around the ocean and calling them separate. They're, really, all the oceans are interconnected. Water flows between them. Um, to get from one ocean basin to the next takes around 1,500 years, depending on which calculator you use. Um, for that. So even though they, it may not be fast circulation, they are all interconnected. That being said, we have historically divided them up into four uh, major oceans, though oceanographers actually divide them into five. The four you've probably already heard of, the Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, and hopefully you've heard of the Arctic Ocean. Um, they're all here on this map. The one that the oceanographers add in is the Southern Ocean. Um, it's basically everything south of this imaginary line, which is approximately uh, 50 degrees south. There. People sometimes don't like the designation of the Southern Ocean because, you know, oh, it doesn't have real boundaries. Um, the continents aren't real boundaries either. Water flows from one or the other. Uh, so we're going to talk about each um, ocean in a little more detail. So the Pacific Ocean is the largest ocean. It's um, of all the oceans there are, the, the four and the five-ish, 50% um, of all the surface waters are on in the Pacific. Um, it's the deepest ocean, uh, slightly deeper than the Atlantic. It's the oldest ocean. It's getting smaller every year. It's shrinking due to plate tectonics, um, specifically um, uh, subduction zones. There's actually a typo on this page. I'm going to put it right here. There should be a comma. Uh, the, the, the depth of the ocean, and this actually, there's a little bit of wiggle room with this number, um, is because it depends on what part you're measuring. But the, the Marianas Trench is a trench in the Pacific Ocean. And within it is a Challenger Deep, and they've gone to the bottom of it, and it's over 11,000 meters or 11 kilometers deep, which is deeper than Mount Everest is tall. Um, so Pacific Ocean is kind of important. After the Pacific, the next largest is the Atlantic. Uh, Atlantic Ocean is the youngest of the oceans we'll be talking about. Uh, it's, you know, uh, seismically it just split open recently in terms of geological time scales, um, around 180 to 220 million years ago, depending on when you consider it a sea versus an ocean. Um, it has some chemical characteristics that are different than the Pacific. It's actually quite a bit saltier um, in terms of um, the sea surface salinity. Uh, we'll talk about that in greater detail in the chemistry chapter. And when we get to the current chapter, we'll learn about the ways that that horrible movie, The Day After Tomorrow, was actually ever so slightly correct. Um, the, the North Atlantic specifically is um, wildly important to the climate of the Northern Hemisphere in particular, and generally the entire um, global hem uh, climate. So the Atlantic Ocean is unique that way and kind of getting studied in ways that frequently the other major oceans aren't because of its unique um, importance to climate. Oh, and, and a word about videos in particular. You notice this, this slide isn't, um, this part isn't really changing. Um, all these pictures are available in the books that you'll be getting in the fall, so don't sweat it so much. You don't need to draw them or anything. I don't give you the picture number. Sometimes I do. Um, there, we have two different versions of the book. Um, thanks, Sandy. So um, whether or not you get version one or version two might change the picture number, so you know don't agonize over the pictures too much at this point. 
The Indian Ocean is unique um, it, it, in that it's almost entirely in the southern hemisphere. Um, so it has some similarities between the Pacific and Atlantic, which are split into northern and um, southern portions like the North Atlantic, South Atlantic, North Pacific, South Pacific. The Indian is mostly just south, but it, it has some unique weather patterns. Um, the monsoon, oh, another typo, I should fix that. Monsoon is um, pretty interesting. We'll learn about when we talk about climate and currents, um, but it only occurs in the Indian Ocean and has huge effects, actually, surprisingly, on the Pacific Ocean, even though the Pacific is much, much bigger. The Arctic is the smallest ocean. It's also the shallowest. Um, if you look right here, um, you can see it's way shallower than the other ones. Um, the other ones are all, you know, roughly the same, um, but the Arctic is like one third the depth of all of the other ones. Uh, this is a function of where it is and, and um, the fact that it's mostly uh, continental crust under there. But it's uh, focused a lot of um, climate study changes are a lot of changes of climate um, are studied there because of the fact that it has um, sea ice. It should have sea ice all year, the extent of which um, will vary season to season, but we know that in the last few years that's changed a lot. Um, I'm sure you've heard about the polar bears. Everybody's freaking out about the polar bears. Polar bears require the Arctic Ocean to have sea ice in order to feed, so the Arctic Ocean is getting a lot of press lately. So the Southern Ocean um, doesn't really have any physical boundaries, uh, maybe a little bit South America, and then the uh, Cape Horn in Africa sort of mark the edges of it. Um, oceanographers don't really argue that it, that it is a real ocean. It is chemically uh, distinct and physically as well from all the other oceans. It has different salinity, different temperatures um, than the surrounding oceans. It actually has a very large effect on climate when it flows into the other oceans. Um, it has unique resources. Um, people are really worried about the oil there. Hopefully they'll never get to drill there. It has gold. It has very shallow shelves with um, wildly more biodiverse organisms than we thought. Um, some of the largest animals, uh, invertebrates we have ever seen modern times, live underneath the ice in Antarctica. So, um, so the Southern Ocean is unique and it is a real ocean and we will be talking about it as such for the purpose of this class. All right, so um, we've talked about the major oceans. Let's talk about how um, the oceans compare to the continents. So the average ocean depth is about um, 4,000 meters, four kilometers, while the average elevation on land is less than 1,000 meters. So the oceans are much deeper than the land is tall. Um, and, and this is something we frequently don't see because we see mountains, well, you know, not in New Jersey, but in places they actually have mountains, you know, you should realize that the features underneath the, the relatively flat surface of the ocean are much larger. And if you think about this, this makes sense. I mean, we have erosion going on on land, um, wind, rain, so on. And underneath the ocean, there's much less exposure to the elements, so there's a lot less erosion, so features don't get worn away. Um, the deepest spot in the ocean is the Challenger Deep, which is a valley within the Marianas Trench, um, which is over uh, 11 kilometers deep. We've talked about this already. But this is quite a bit deeper than Everest is tall. And I believe there's a couple of other spots of the Marianas as well as other trenches that are actually all deeper than Everest is tall. So um, the, the ocean has a lot of features going on in terms of it. And these can have um, effects all the way up on the surface of the ocean and even on land. Um, they recently discovered in the Philippine Sea where there's a fairly deep trench. Um, these huge internal waves, like thousands of meters tall, um, and that have an effect on currents and stuff. So a, a lot of study of the deep ocean going on. Maybe you've wondered what the difference between a sea versus the ocean is. Um, we're trying to put hard boundaries on these. Functionally, um, these are the criteria we use in oceanography. Seas are smaller and shallower. Um, seas... Um, can be fresh water, sometimes they're salt. Oceans are always salt water. Um, the salt water, the, the amount of salt in seas can be um, very, very salty, like the Dead Sea, which is um, exponentially saltier than the ocean, to um, relatively fresh, like I believe the Caspian Sea is fresh. I forget which one it is. The seas are generally enclosed by land, um, though the Sargasso Sea, which is actually in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, is surrounded by ocean currents. Um, they do connect to the ocean somehow. Um, many of them do this just through the hydrosphere, but they are part of the oceans. 
And um, one of the ones that's really important that won't make a lot of sense yet, uh, unless you've had plate tectonics maybe in middle school, is that seas, um, they're underneath and their surroundings of them are always continental rock, well, um, which is granite, while the oceans are bounded by um, uh, the bottom of which is oceanic rock or basalt. Maybe you've heard of the seven seas, um, but the seven seas were kind of a, a term used by European explorers and they tended to be a little uh, European centric. And these are the list, Red Sea, Med, Persian, Black, Adriatic, Caspian, Indian, and so on. Uh, I think a lot of people would have a hard time, especially in this country, identifying where some of those are um, on a map. They were really important to trade at the time, but the modern interpretation of the seven seas, quote unquote, um, are the, the five oceans we've talked about, um, and then they sort of split them up. So they would split the Pacific Atlantic into two, Northern and Pacific, Southern Pacific, Northern Atlantic, Southern Atlantic, Indian Arctic, and the Southern Ocean uh, would be the, what modern navigators call the seven seas. We're actually going to stop here. This will be the end of the first video. We'll start the next video with exploration of the oceans.